Chapter 5 The Functions of the United Nations In the last lesson, we familiarized ourselves about the United Nations. In this lesson, we will study about the different ways adopted by this organization to establish international peace. We will also try to understand the achievement of the UN and India's participation in it. The Charter of the United Nations spells out the important methods of resolving the international conflicts. Accordingly, international disputes, conflicts and disagreements can be resolved by the two following methods. 1. Peaceful Methods The UN lays a special emphasis on resolving conflicts through peaceful methods. The UN expects that the nations that have disputes or disagreements would solve them through negotiations, mediation or goodwill. 2. Method of Direct Action If the issues are not resolved by peaceful means, then the UN uses the method of direct action. In this method, UN uses the peacekeeping forces of its member countries against the aggressor nations. However, this direct action is carried out on humanitarian grounds. The UN has carried out such humanitarian interventions in countries like Korea, Congo and Somalia to solve their problems. Though the UN has not been completely successful in putting an end to the wars in the world, it has taken a lot of efforts to create an environment which would help in the development of humanity and give a guarantee of peace. The UN has made a significant contribution in the areas of conservation of environment, rights of the children, empowerment of women, etc. UN and the Environmental Issue The destruction of the environment at a global level is a serious problem. The UN has put forward many proposals for the protection of the environment. It has organized many important conferences to make the countries understand the seriousness of the issue, initiate a discussion amongst them and solve the question through their cooperation. In 1972, a conference was organized at Stockholm, Sweden. This led to the finalization of the environmental program of the UN. Thereafter, an international commission was set up on development and environment. It put forward the concept of sustainable development. The organization of the Earth Summit in 1992 was another important step in the efforts for the protection of environment. This conference discussed issues like the depletion of the ozone layer, protection of forests and other natural resources, biodiversity and control over pollution. In the year 1997, an international agreement regarding environment was signed. This is known as the Kyoto Protocol. India accepted this agreement in 2002. She has also actively participated in all the efforts for environmental conservation at the global level. India has given priority to the issue of environmental protection while deciding her economic industrial, trade and other policies. The United Nations and Women Empowerment The UN has supported the idea of the empowerment of women and male-female equality. The UN has declared 8th March as International Women's Day in order to draw the attention of the world towards women's issues and to find solutions to them. The year 1975 was declared as the Women's Year. Not only that, 1976 to 1985, an entire decade was declared as the Women's Decade. This organization has set up training institutes and an independent fund for the development of women all over the world. The UN collects information about the different problems relating to women. On the basis of this, it takes important decisions and implements them. India's Participation in the Activities of the United Nations 
India is a founder member of the UN. She has accepted all the aims and objectives of the organization. India has played a very important role in the peacekeeping functions of the UN. Quite recently, the Indian peacekeeping force in Somalia carried out tasks like digging wells, supplying water, running schools, providing health services, etc. This work of the Indian peacekeeping force is a matter of great pride for us. Disarmament In order to keep the pace of development and economic prosperity, it is necessary to have peace and stability in the country. For this, disarmament becomes important. Though attempts are being made for international peace, some nations seem to be escalating the arms race. This arms race can create an environment of mistrust and suspicion among nations. Disarmament refers to the idea that international peace can be established if armaments are destroyed, their production is stopped or there are limits on the use of armaments. In 1959, the UN declared universal and comprehensive disarmament as its objective. India's Policy of Disarmament India has supported disarmament and has always responded to the efforts of the UN for disarmament. India has a principled opposition to nuclear weapons because the world faces the threat of a nuclear war. She has supported the policy of nuclear disarmament at the international level. No first use of nuclear weapons is the most important principle of India's nuclear policy.